Hey what's up guys, Tava here, and today I'm going to be showing you a free way to create super cinematic 3D earth animations to enhance your stories. Everyone needs to check this out. As you can see from those video tests, you can make some really incredible results from this program. And again, it is entirely free, which is super cool. Just as a disclaimer though, I obviously added some effects to that footage, but it was really easy to do and I'll touch on that later, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't exactly look like that, but it's pretty close. I mean, it looks amazing anyway. What I really love about this program, which is called Google Earth Studio, is its ability to kind of simulate drone footage if you might not have a drone, be able to create drone-like shots in situations where drones aren't allowed, or just create animations of places you've never even been to or want to go to. It's really incredible in that regard. And just as a filmmaker or a video creator, this program allows you so many different ways to incorporate different styles and looks into your films to help you tell better stories. And I think that's really cool, especially since it's free. But enough talking, here's the program and how you use it. So now you can just open up a new window on whatever browser you're using. I'm using Chrome, and you can just search up Google Earth Studio. From there, you're just gonna wanna click on the first link. And so the first time you open this up, since it's still kind of a beta, you're gonna have to click on the Try Earth Studio. And it's gonna make you sign up and put in why you wanna use it and whatnot, but I already did this. So it just comes up with this panel here. So from here, it's actually really simple. You can either create a blank project by just clicking here or click over here and do quick start. If you go to quick start, you have these different options. You can go zoom to, orbit, all these different things. And they show you little samples when you hover over them. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of these quick start projects because I think the program is really easy to use anyway. But if you want to try these, you can. Anyway, I'm just going to go back and do blank project. Now you're allowed to title your project. I'm just going to leave it untitled, whatever. And you can choose your dimensions, number of frames, and frame rate. All this stuff doesn't really matter though because you can change it all later. So I'm just going to click start. So now it's going to load up. This is what the project window looks like and it has a little image of the earth here which you are able to move around and this is how you're going to control what your project itself looks like. And over here on the left you have these little buttons which are keyframes. So click on the keyframes to set different points on where you want the project to end up going. So for this example let's just pick a city with some cool 3D models. Um, let's say let's say Venice. So if you want to look that up you want to go directly to that place without having to find it on this earth globe. You just go up to the left on the search and I'm just going to search Venice. So I'm going to click on that, it's going to zoom in. So I'm just going to zoom around, look what I have here. If you hold option, you're able to kind of tilt the camera to get a more 3D perspective. But I'm just going to look around here. This is obviously a famous part right here, so this could be cool. This is like a good 3D model. So another thing to note is that you can add more attributes than are shown here. So if you just click add attributes, you're able to add all these different things. And my personal favorite one is time of day, because if you turn that on, you're able to completely manually adjust what time of day it is. And you can see there's stars at the top, you can go to sunrise, sunset, and it really allows you to create a more realistic look on what you're trying to go for. So look at that, that looks, that looks pretty cinematic right there. So let's go right here, say I like this frame here, I'm just gonna click at the top, which is keyframe all attributes. So this is gonna set this point at zero, zero, and it's gonna be locked like that. Now I'm gonna go forward to say frame 150, stop there and what i can do now is reposition the camera to where i want it to go to so let's say i want it to fly forward and then zoom down so what i'm going to do is just pull forward here and then once i'm here i can change the settings more detailed over here so let's say i want my altitude to be a little bit lower and i also want the camera to tilt down a little bit so i'll go to tilt and move the adjustment down like that. So I get a nice top down view of the city down below and that looks pretty awesome there. And I don't really want anything else to change so I'll just do the keyframe all right here again. And as you can see if I go back I've already created this whole animation and if I play back it gives me an easy example of what it will look like. 
It's a little glitchy because it's trying to load in real time, but that is amazing. That took me like two minutes, and I just created this insane animation of Venice, which is really, really cool. All right, I think that looks pretty cool just as an example. As you can see, it's really easy to use, and you can add all these things, just mess around with them. There's more detailed tutorials online, but this is just a quick overview on how you can make these cinematic looks super easily. So when you're happy with what you have, you can just go over here to the top right and click Render. And it's just going to load up a quick example and you're going to select the frames that you want to export. For me it's 0 through 156. And over here as well you can change the dimensions which is going to be the quality of the image. It defaults at 1080p but I like to set it to 4K which is 4096. And it will change this to 2304. When you do set the resolution higher it will take a lot longer to render. But you get some really high quality results that look better than 1080p although it still looks good no matter what. And then one thing to keep in mind is that all this footage will have a watermark, so you can just decide right here where you want it, either on the top or bottom on either side. I like to keep it on the bottom right, but it doesn't really matter. So once you're happy with what you have, all you have to do is click start right here, and what it's going to do is start rendering your project. So it's going to load all these little 3D nodes that it needs for this project. And then once it has what it needs, it's going to go frame by frame, saving each one, and you can see how great the quality looks on here. I do have really fast Wi-Fi where I am right now, so it does help it to speed up the process, but it is pretty quick despite that. So once it's done rendering and it downloads, it will save as a zip file inside of your downloads. You can just double click to open that, and it will open into a folder, and inside you'll find your footage. In the footage, it doesn't actually assemble into a video, but it's just a bunch of individual photos, as you can see here, which are all really high quality. So you actually do have to take these photos and create them into a video file. I don't do this in the most professional way, but how I do this is I open up Final Cut Pro, which is where I edit all of this. I go to the top, I select the top file, and then I go to the bottom and I hold shift and then press and it selects them all. Then I just drag, hover over Final Cut, and when it acknowledges the photos, I just drop it in. And then what I do is right click, create compound clip, say yes to compound clip, and it's gonna create this like 10 minute video, which you don't want. So then I go up to speed ramp, do custom speed and set it to about 10,000%. So now you can see I have this super smooth video right here of Venice, which is just awesome. So you can just leave it here, which looks super awesome, or you can do what I did earlier, which is add some more effects to it to make it look more realistic. So on the earlier ones, basically what I added to each one was this little lens distortion effect, which basically just adds these little dots of specs on the lens to make it look like a real camera. And then on some of them, like this one, I added in snow to make it look like it was actually in that element it was supposed to be into. So just as an example, on the Venice one, I'm going to be adding a lens dirt filter over the top. And you can actually get these filters for free from Action VFX. I'll leave a link down below. But they're super cool and they add a great look to your footage. So I'll just grab this one, for instance, lay it over the top of my Venice footage and drag it over the whole duration. And you can see it doesn't fit right now, so I'm going to scale it up. And now as you can see, it's black so it cuts out the entire image, but what you're going to do is go over to your settings and change the blend mode from normal to screen. And on this it looks like a little bit too much, so I might lower the opacity. So I just want like a little bit of that distortion look on the edge that so makes it look a little bit less perfect. And as you can see, it's not huge, but it adds a little bit of realism to the shot that I don't think is there otherwise. Another thing I could add to this one, like I added to another one, were like birds flying by, but I don't think I'm going to do that for the example. It's pretty easy to do, but it just takes some more time. And then one more thing for this night shot that I got, this one actually does take a bit more work. I had to do it inside of After Effects, and I actually found a great tutorial online on how to do it, which if you have After Effects and have time, you should definitely check out because it creates this super cool nightscape that I just think is awesome. So I'll leave the link for that down below as well. But that's basically it. This is Google Earth Studio. It's a great free tool for filmmakers that allows you to add more versatility into your films. And yeah, I definitely recommend you all check it out. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.